Hey, Shalom, Yashua, the one that starts us by giving all praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai, double honors, possible JMS, and honors to you brothers that are doing the work in truth for our sincerity. Just want to do a real quick one. Uh, once again, about poverty, you know, um, yeah, we, we live in London, it's supposed to be a great city, uh, you know, where you're walking around, even in really expensive, nice parts of the city, and you see people are homeless. I uh, remember the station I get on, to, you know, I get off when I'm going to work. Um, which is an I get off where I get off the center of the city, a really affluent part of the city. You had a couple sleeping in a bed, uh, literally outside the station. You just had a mattress. Was it a mattress? Or they just in there and they have duvet covers. I forget, but you know, the point stands and you'd be going around and you basically have empty houses, and he sort of block them out, not let let people sleep in there. Um, I remember hearing, I believe, from RT that in Europe there are more empty houses then there are homeless people, right, it's just, you know, it just goes to show you what kind of society that we're living in, right, um, you get, I know you get a big problem with veterans, they've been told that they're going out to fight for the country, fight for, the, you know, fighting for England, you know, fighting for America, but then they come back and they realise that nobody gives a shit about them, right, but just wanted to go into the law, and basically how in Israel, like, Lord, you, you, you were taken care of, you know, your brother will take care of you, um, and that there was stuff there for you, you know, basically a, a welfare system, right, so this is Leviticus 23, 22, says, when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make the clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shall thou go uh, gather any gleanings of thy harvest, thou shalt leave them unto the poor, and to the stranger, I am Yahweh, your power. Right, basically, when you when you was to till your ground, let's say you had, you know, a hundred acres of land, right? A tenth of that, you was basically supposed to leave unto the, um, basically unto the, unto the, uh, unto the poor. You know, I'd, I'd not, not too sure about if it's exactly a tenth, don't quote me on that. But basically, when you was to have your land, you weren't supposed to just clean it up. You are supposed to leave some for the poor, Right. Uh, let me get the next one. This is uh, Deuteronomy 15 and 7. Right, Deuteronomy 15 and 7 says, If there be any among you a poor man of thy brethren within thy, any of thy gates in the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Right, you're supposed to, like I said, you're supposed to take care of your brother. You see your brother has need. You know, or, or, you know, in this kingdom, it's difficult because you might be helping a guy, rather thinking you're helping a guy, but he's just gonna go spend that money, and uh, you know, do drugs, All right? So verse eight says, "But thou shalt," which is why I remember the apostles, uh, Apostle Tahar said this. You know, sometimes your bowels of compassion may open up to a guy. You know, you might be thinking, hey, "This guy's sincere." You might, you know, give him the cash, but you never know. You might buy you in this side anyway, given. You know, someone some cash. You know, like I said, they may end up going and do some drugs. So you've not really helped that person. You've hindered that person. You might think giving them food is helpful, but then if you give them food also, then they, that means all the money that they've been given throughout the day they can just spend on drugs. So you, you don't know. Just, those ones, let's go with the spirit. Whatever you, the spirit feels inclined in you to do, right? As verse eight says, but thou shalt not shall open thine hand un wide unto him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, in that which he wanteth. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying the seventh year, the year of release, is, is at hand, and thine eye be evil against thy brother, and, God, and thou givest him naught, and he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Right. So, what's what's this is talking about is the year of jubilee. Right, so um, in fact, let me open up a new tab here. I uh, don't. No. Ah. I don't know where it is, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I don't know where it is. Uh, I'm gonna have to look up, look that up for yourself. Basically, the year of Jubilee is basically the end of every seven years you uh, release. So anyone who owed you debt, you release them. So what this is saying here is if a man comes to you in the sixth year, right, and then he, you, he, he asks to borrow cash, you can't then say, look, um, you know, the, the year of release is almost here. 
uh, you know, I ain't gonna give you any cash. Why? Because it's being wicked, it's being, you know, it's being a nigger. Right, so whether it's the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, you're supposed to lend on to the man. And in the seventh year, you're supposed to clear him those debts. Right, I believe it's a year of release. Yeah, it says Deuteronomy 15 and 1, Russell Bates at the top of this, is, at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. Right, so just go detailing what it is that I that I just uh, just read for us here. Right, so basically, and that's why people in this kingdom just get overridden with debt because everything is worked and worked and worked and worked and worked so hard until basically there's nothing left. Just like the land, which is why every seven years you ain't supposed to, uh, you know, till the land because you're supposed to let it grow. Uh, let it replenish the land, which is why there's so much weeds everywhere. When you look at it, weeds are actually very beneficial to the land that they're in because what they're doing is they're taking up one, they're a sign saying, Look, this land is fucked up, right? Just give me some time to rest. Because what weeds do, they have really long roots, so their roots bring out all the nutrients from deep in the ground and bring it all the way up to the surface that is uh, lacking in minerals, right? So here it is, East will be making millions and billions selling weed killers uh pesticides and all that but those pesticides are there for a reason those pesticides are a warning sign saying look wait this land is sick let it rest right but you saw what does he do he just throws chemicals on it right but it, it, here's more of how Esau is Habakkuk 2 and 5 it says yea also because he transgresseth by wine he is a proud man neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. So let's go into that. Right, because he transgressed by one by his philosophies, like everyone out here believes in this debt based system. You know, you, you, you be telling a guy, how can there be more dollars? How can the US be in more debt than there are dollars? And they'll be able to articulate a response. And you're just thinking, man, you fool. Right, this system is designed from its very inception to fail. Right, he is a proud man. Hey, Esau, Sokolwama, who's more proud than he is? I says, neither keepeth at home. Right, he's going from country to country, continent to continent, trying to uh, uh, basically take that place over, put a central bank there. So, he, and what, what did the Rockefeller say? If I own the money, I don't care who a Roth Rockefeller Rothschild. If I own the money. I don't care who writes the laws, because ultimately, then the government is a debt slave to the um, to the bank, which is what you have here. When you when you hear it, why why are countries put in austerity? Because the bank says so. The bank says, look, we've been borrowing too much. Uh, you know, we've got to pay this money back. Right? Who enlarges his desires as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied? He ain't satisfied. Which is why he's charging you for water. He's charging you for for air practically. That's what a carbon tax is. Here in London, you've got congestion charge as to, uh, you know, prevent pollution. You've got the uh, low CO2 emission zone to prevent uh, pollution and all of that good stuff. So practically charging you for clean air, taxing you for clean air, right? Um, what well, is basically taxing you for literally everything, man, right? And then making people so oppressed. People ain't got money to do anything anymore, right? This is uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Now, that's talking about when, when Israel are going to be in authority, people are going to be cool with it, man. After they served the 1,000 years of hardcore slavery to pay for, uh, you know, all the wickedness that they did to our people, people are going to be cool. They're going to be happy. They're going to be tributaries. When you read Isaiah 60, basically, they're going to be giving us, bringing all their goodies to us, right? Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's going to, they're gonna be good, right? We ain't gonna see. We ain't gonna come out and see a slum and just be cool with it. That's what Esau is. Esau's a, a what's the word masochist. He likes he likes to see other people suffer, which is why it says over here, right? You know, he he is as death and he cannot be satisfied, right? He can't be. Not nothing you can give Esau can satisfy him, which is why he's conquered the whole world and now he's doing that. He wants to go into space, ruin that too. Right, but when the wicked bear through the people mourning, people are mourning. Everyone on the face of the planet Earth is a mourning. 
when you have these you know these people with money that think they're not immortal but then you ask them okay so what about your family or oh, their wife has just left them trying to take half of their fortune or or and you know what these rich people those are the ones that live in credit the most and those are the ones hey they're most likely to take the chip right hey man just take this chip you know all of the money you spend on that rolls royce you know your, your your 70 million pound house whatever what have you forget about that you know just take the chip it's cool no but it ain't cool you ain't supposed to take the chip right this is a uh, exodus 21 and 6 why did i bring this out well, I won't, uh, yeah, so it's Exodus 21, 6, says, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an old, and he shall serve him forever. So basically de- what this is detailing is you've got a Hebrew servant who was working for his master, but then he was like, yo, look, you know, I want to I wanna work for you. I want to move on. Because it was such that, You'd serve a man for a while, but at that end of that while, you have enough to go and set yourself up. But not like in this king, like I'm like I'm detailing, right? Uh, what you have in this kingdom is you work for a man, and then that's it. You you carry on working, you carry on working, you carry on working. It's all your life. All you do is work, 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 work. The average man is working from twenty years old until seventy something when they get stuck in their care home. And just left to die, more or less. Right, but that's not how it was supposed to be. When you was working under a man, you were a servant to a man. You're supposed to have had enough after a period of time to basically go out and do what you do. For, take uh, Jacob, for example. He worked under Laban. You know, he 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 got he paid for his wives by working. I uh, you know fourteen years, right. And then at the end of that, he he was good to go. He had enough. Uh, he obviously stayed a bit long, but you know he had enough to do what he what he had to do and he left and he dipped I, how many years was it? I know he served 7 years and 14 years for Rachel and left I forget whether he, you know whether he stayed after the fact or not so don't quote me on that um, it's not fresh in my mind right basically here this is basically saying look I, it looks like I'm getting modelled up now basically I bought this out saying look you know a man's supposed to have good be good for a while and then work for a man for a while, and then he's supposed to have had enough to basically be let to let out to go. And we've said, yo, you know what? I got a good here, you know. Then you know he basically gets made a servant forever. Now you can carry on reading the rest of that as well, right? And this is a quick one. First John three seventeen says, but whosoever hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need, and shut up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of the Most High in him? Right, so you know, you, you got us brothers nowadays who are supposed to be taking care of each other, right? And you know, it, it is wrong. we're compassionate people anyway, man. We're not like, like the whole, uh, what do you call it, premise of this video is we ain't, you ain't supposed to be like these Edomites who will see someone who maybe hasn't got a good job and he'll mock them. Oh, you just worked there, ha 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 ha. Well, they're just going to be working in the pits, you know, breaking that rock. Well, because these people are so proud, they got this uh, this job pride. You got this job pride, and that's a demon that can can come fuck with you at any point. You might be, oh, you know, I got a good job. You know, I got this that. Hey, you always got to remember, the Lord can take it away from you at any moment, bro. But you know, <laughs> it's like I said, I just wanted to touch on on those quick things, right? Okay, because we ain't gonna be. Ha- that's gonna be a blot in our society, in our kingdom. Uh, having you know homeless and abject poverty on our doorstep, right? You 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 get places like in Rio de Janeiro where you got guys in these plush villas overlooking slums. How can you how can you truly enjoy your plush villa when 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 you go to overlook slums? Like I said, masochist man, you must be a masochist to look and enjoy. Oh, I looked at the poor poor people. Ain't that such a shame? On one side you're throwing away food, on the other side you can't eat food for shit. You're, you're going days without eating. Parents ain't eating so that their children can eat. Those are true stories in Esau's kingdom. Right, so with that, Lord's will you said further, I'm going to say Shalom.